Welcome to the MBA Mission Podcast, where every week we discuss different MBA application components and give our expert guidance on everything business school admissions related. Hi, everyone. This is Harold Szymanski with the MBA Mission Podcast. I'm here today with my colleague, Christine Patel. Hi, Christine. Hey, Harold. How's everything going with you? Uh, it's going well. How about you? Good. Going well, going well. And today we're talking about MBA programs with a focus on healthcare. And Christine, I know you went to Stanford with a focus on healthcare you, yourself, but I also know that you really looked at a lot of programs and you continue to keep your eye on the different MBA programs focused on healthcare. Why don't you just give us a little bit of background about yourself, about the programs, and just what your thought is now? If I'm an applicant thinking about applying to, to an MBA with a, who wants to really dive into healthcare. Yeah, uh, no problem, Harold. Uh, so I worked primarily in healthcare before applying to business school. I worked in management consulting with pharmaceutical clients in New York City. And then I joined a startup in Silicon Valley that was started by two GSB uh, founders. And uh, it was called Hippocrates. And I also helped start a free clinic that eventually became part of Stanford Medical School mm-hmm. called Pacific Free Clinic. And so from those experiences, I knew that I wanted to focus in healthcare. I've always want, had an interest in improving people's lives. And so I applied to only healthcare programs for MBA schools. Um, I applied to Wharton's healthcare management program, as well as Berkeley Haas MBA MPH joint program. And Stanford GSB at the time had a public management program, and I focused in healthcare policy. So I was very fortunate. I was admitted to all three schools, and I decided to go to the GSB um, and the reasons why were primarily because I loved the culture. I wanted to stay in the Bay Area. I also felt like there was a lot of innovation and that the fit would, would be good for me. But honestly, all these other schools were excellent. Um, you know, there are so many great choices out there. One question I'm asked quite frequently is the Warden HCM program. How is yes. it different? How is it the same uh, as, yes. using, as, as uh, when compared to the regular MBA program? Yes. Uh, so June Kinney does a great program leading a specific healthcare management cohort. So that means that you have a specific group of students dedicated to just healthcare management. And so you apply separately. Um, you say that you're interested in the healthcare management program. You actually have another interview run by June Kinney on, you know, for the healthcare management program, in addition to this team simulation based warden interview. And then once admitted, you, you know, there's a program with the healthcare curriculum, as well as a dedicated program with an, you know, resume book, um, its own activities. Uh, I, you know, I definitely think Wharton's one of the best healthcare management programs out there. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And what I've certainly heard from a lot of people is that over the past couple of years, um, the healthcare management program at Wharton has actually gotten a lot more entrepreneurial. So yes. with that in mind, if I'm, if I want to go into healthcare, but I also want to be an entrepreneur. How would I think about each one of these programs? Honestly, almost I'd say every business school has an excellent you know, entrepreneurial program. I don't think you could go wrong with so many of these schools out there. Um, you know, ever since I had applied a while back, I mean, uh, there's so many more options than before, which I find very exciting. I think actually, what's more um, unique is actually finding a program that has a healthcare concentration with yep. you know specific courses as well as a strong network you know looking at the alumni network for example i think Wharton's healthcare management program has 2000 alumni in its network for healthcare it's really strong um, i'd also look at you know if you want to do entrepreneurship in healthcare healthcare is very broad it depends what you're interested in for example if you want to do biotech then maybe you want to focus in schools that either have let's say like harvard has an ms mba biotech program and it's in a hub for biotech, you know, Boston. You, know, you can look at where the ge- geographical hubs are, you know, for biotech, it's, you know, like Boston, San Francisco, San Diego. And, you know, so it just depends, I think, what you're interested in building as a company, as well as, you know, what your geographic preferences might be. Right. right. I'm going to put in a plug for my old school. Um, right now in Cambridge, there's one area called Kendall Square, which is the Silicon Valley Biotech. Right yes. in the middle of Kendall Square, there happens to be a business school, and that's the MIT Sloan School of Management. So yes. at MIT Sloan School, if you want to go in biotech, you just walk out the back door, and there you are. So yes. but again, there's a lot of great programs when I think about it here. I also yes. think about places like Duke, which has such great yes. ties to the, really the, uh, I would say the hospital, hospital administration, just much larger pharmaceuticals are down in North Carolina. And that yep. also is a pretty exciting place. 
and there's a lot of research yeah. going on yeah. in, in the research triangle area there. Um, you know, Melinda Gates mm -hmm. is an alum of Duke, both undergrad and the business school. And, you know, having her run the Gates Foundation you know, in the past has been amazing. So every business school, I think a lot of them have very specific programs. Obviously, Stanford GSB is in the epicenter of yeah. Silicon Valley. And so you don't, you just, you have not yeah. only, you know, biotech there, but you have a lot of health tech that you don't, you don't see as much or diagnostic companies. Um, it's very exciting. It's near San Francisco, right. which is considered currently the epicenter for AI. Yeah. And as you know, there's a lot of AI and health right. healthcare going on. So I feel like there's just, it's a very exciting time right now. Yeah, definitely. And it's sort of funny where you can get a really great healthcare MBA. And part of that has to do with, like you said, geography. I've yes. had a number of clients who were interested in healthcare go down to Vanderbilt. Because yes. as they say about Nashville, you're either making country music or you're in healthcare. That's the two things yes. you can do in Nashville. That, <laughs> so that's though, exactly at this point, right. I'm trying to create football team, so. Yes, so, I think Vanderbilt but, obviously has a very strong healthcare program. A lot, I think, it's in the double digits the percentage of alumni graduating into healthcare there because you know Nashville is such a big um, epicenter for healthcare. Um, also, you know, healthcare is really broad. It just depends what area. Yeah. So you know, like venture investing in healthcare, you you know, obviously places like New York, San Francisco, maybe Boston, you know, would be interesting. Yeah. Or healthcare finance in New York City, you know, so it just depends, you know, really what you're int into. Right, right, right. Definitely, definitely. And honestly, then you start bubbling up from the other direction, meaning very entrepreneurial schools. Yes. Uh, like University of Texas McCombs. It has just a wonderful sort of entrepreneurial environment. And now healthcare is everywhere. The biotech is everywhere, particularly at University of Texas, such a big, such a huge yes. campus. It's just a huge system that you're going to find your way into healthcare there, health tech yes. there as well. Yeah. Exactly. Um, there's so many great programs out there. I mean, Kellogg, you know, obviously is one of the, yeah. the best in healthcare. Um, you know, they have a case competition specifically in healthcare. So is, so does Ross, actually, University of Michigan. Uh, people love, you know, Ross. I've had co colleagues in healthcare from all these schools that you've, you know, we've mentioned, Duke, you know, and so I feel like it, there's so many great options out there. I mentioned this earlier. Harvard has a new program um, right. that with the biotech uh, master's. Right. as well as an MBA. And I think that's really exciting. You know, I have a few clients applying in that program and it's, it's really an amazing program. The, 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 re, you know, the opportunities um, in research as well as melding the science a little bit in more depth. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's a great program to, to, you know, mm -hmm. to look for, if you're interested in that area. Yeah, definitely. And Christine, you mentioned a program that honestly I'm less uh, aware of, and that I guess is what's happening at Berkeley. You said they have an MBA uh, yeah. as well as in public health. Yeah. Yes. Um, Berkeley Haas has an amazing program. Whether or not you're in the joint MPH MBA program or just the normal MBA program, I think a good number, um, somewhere between six to eight percent of graduates in Haas actually go into healthcare. You know, okay. it's, it's close to San Francisco, you know, close to health tech, biotech, health systems and, and policy. So, I, I, you know, that honestly, Berkeley is an amazing program. I've worked with people who graduated there, you know, in at Genentech and also when I was at a startup called Hippocrates, and they're honestly amazing leaders. It's it's really a great program. No, no, that that makes sense. That I think one of the issues that we always have with those business schools, and by no means all of them, that actually have specific curriculum. So whether it's they call it a major, they call it a track, or they yeah. potentially call it a certificate, yes. sometimes feel constrained by those. When yes. you were at Stanford, did you feel constrained by having to be a healthcare? focus or was it something that was actually quite more flexible than it may imply? Uh, it was very flexible. I, I had the opportunity to, to, you know, take many types of classes. So I took foundational classes at the GSB, you know, like accounting, finance, et cetera. But I also took entrepreneurship classes that were just general classes. I helped start a new class actually that's still going called healthcare yeah. innovation at Stanford. Oh, I actually pulled nice. a professor, Alan Enchoven, out of retirement to make that happen and still going oh, on wow. right now. That's yeah. Crazy. And at the same That's time, crazy. I took classes across the street, you know, at in the BioX building. Um, right. You can take classes, you know, with the medical school, which is exciting or engineering. And there's a new program from John Doerr. You know, he helped fund an yeah. environmental program. And so there's all yeah. these great things at Stanford. And then the design school, that was one area I didn't yeah. take a class in, but I know bunch of my peers actually went to the D school to take some courses there. So honestly, I, you know, you can take so many different classes at Stanford. It's quite amazing. 
Right. No, no, that, that is amazing. On another podcast, we're going to talk to you just about your experience at Stanford. So okay. listeners, you can wait for that or catch up with us on our podcast channel. Um, Christine, this was really, really terrific today. Any sort of last words for, of wisdom for those people interested in healthcare or biotech and applying for uh, and applying to business school? Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, I think it's, well, it's great to show an interest in healthcare, you know, writing about that in your essays and talking about in your interviews. I would say with my clients that I've worked with, um, one feedback I'd give is just getting more specific. So, you know, instead of saying, I really like this class or I like, being this in this club, there's a healthcare club, you know, everywhere. Yeah, um, right. I think diving deeper than that, like give me specific reasons why, you know, I, maybe yes. I met someone that was really passionate about rare diseases and I want to make a difference in this area, given my experience in rare disease in mm -hmm. clinical trials. And I can see myself here, you know, specifically doing that after talking with this alum and looking at this class, like just bring it pull it in more together, you know, on what specifically you want to do instead of just saying, I like, you know, this school for this program and this, and this club. I, I hope that helps. No, no, really. It, it absolutely does help. And what I will say though, if you want to spend 30 minutes, just talking to Christine about anything about your business school admissions, about healthcare MBAs, about your own profile in this year's landscape, by all means, if you want to speak to Christine, sign up, uh, on, for our free 30 minute MBA mission consult consultation. And you can speak to Christine, you can speak to me, you can speak to any one of our 20 or so colleagues. It's absolutely free. What's also free is what's on our MBA mission website. And we have huge resources, interview guides, school guides, blog posts about healthcare. And it's really, I think, great resource. But with that in mind, Christine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for appearing on the podcast today. And I look forward to doing it again with you sometime soon. You're welcome, Harold. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to the MBA Mission Podcast. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcasts so you don't miss an episode. We wish you the best of luck with your MBA applications and look forward to helping you on your journey to business school.